Hello and welcome to Buy Africa, the show where we focus on investment opportunities around the continent. I'm Tepo Modiba and thanks for joining me. Tonight, I'm joined by Andrew Delbaccio, PwC Associate Director of Capital Markets for Southern Africa. And we'll be looking at the recently released 2015 Africa Capital Markets Watch Survey, which analyzes equity and debt capital markets transactions that took place between 2011 and 2015 on exchanges throughout Africa. <laughs> Andrew? Um, I mean, this is a segment that we don't really touch on um, uh, on the show very often, but certainly actually influences uh, things that we're going to talk about in the next couple of years on the show. Um, uh, what 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 does the dynamic of, of uh, capital raising on the continent look like over the last couple of years? Yeah, so thanks very much. The the purpose of our study is really to answer that question, right? It's to bring together all the data about what's happened in Africa over the past five years, kind of smoothing out uh, any one-offs or significant transactions here or there, and right. tell the broader story about what companies in Africa are doing and where they're getting funding. It's a story that I don't think um, gets a lot of attention in uh, out, outside of specific news stories right. in, in kind of a cohesive manner. So that's the purpose of our report. And um, what we found this year was fairly similar to what we found in our 2014 IPO watch in mm -hmm. terms of the equity markets, uh, in terms of breakdowns of sectors, strength in the financial services sector. Are lots of financial services on the continent. That's All it. you need to look at is the stock exchanges, so it makes That's sense. Um, other other um, consumer goods, healthcare, mm. uh, technology. So some of the some of the sectors you expect to uh, to really be active in. In, in a growing society with, with a growing middle class, less associated with, uh, uh, with oil and gas, with, with mining, uh, than you might expect for Africa. So that's, it's fairly consistent from year to year. Mm. Um, that's actually a very interesting point. I mean, the traditional uh, uh, top of mind sectors in, in, in the continent would certainly um, be uh, oil and gas and <coughs> mining, especially given the explorations that are happening. But um, they, those seem to be done by fairly established businesses as opposed to new ones looking for, for IPOs. Yeah, and, and actually I think the, the, uh, the key around, uh, around these different sectors is that the challenges that we've seen over the past year, particularly in the oil and gas sector, mm. uh, mean that the opportunities going forward have to be different, right. uh, at least for the, for the immediate um, foreseeable future. Right. Uh, and what we see in, in non-commodities or non-commodity dependent countries, the mm. IMF has just come out and said that the growth in those countries is, expe is expected to be uh, to the order of, somewhat, uh, of something like 6% in the right. coming year. Yeah. Uh, so it does speak to a, a, the, the shift away from maybe some of those traditional um, areas of interest. Okay. Uh, in terms of um, in the equity space, what sort of numbers are we looking at? Um, has, has there been significant growth in terms of uh, capital raising? Yeah, so I, I think it's important to see the, the numbers in context from our report. So we have uh, in 2015 seen 12.7 billion raised on the equity capital markets, which right. is an increase of 14% over last year. Now, right. if you look at global trends, the global equity capital markets are, were about flat in 2015. So it is, it is a marked difference mm -hmm. to the global trend, uh, but I will say that uh, a good portion of that value raised in 2015 was raised in the first half of the year. Right. So last year we saw double digit growth over 2013 in terms of equity raised. This year we saw even further growth, um, but I think the timing there is also important to consider. Okay, and, and is that really a function of the, the superb economic growth that we've seen throughout the continent um, translating into an increase in the number of businesses coming to the market? I would say over the past five years that probably has been the case. Um, you know, the, the, the narrative around Africa rising has certainly been a very compelling one, mm. and that probably did drive last year's double digit growth on the year before. Uh, this year, it's, I think it's very difficult to interpret given what's happened in the second half of the year in particular and given where we are now. Okay. If we remove the, the equity hat and put yep. on our debt hat, um, what does the dynamic in that space look like over the last couple of years? Yeah, so for, this, is, this is the first time we've examined the debt cap capital markets in Africa. And, and again, we, we focused on what's happened over the past five years. Right. When you look at the total debt raised, uh, taking 2013, which is a very active year in those markets out, it's actually f remained fairly constant in terms of the amount of debt raised. Okay. Um, we do see a good portion of the debt being 
uh, related to sovereigns and, and supranational organizations. Right. Uh, and then we also do see a, a decent split between high yield and investment grade. Um, 2015 being uh, slightly more muted in that corporate high yield and investment grade than prior years. So in terms of, I guess, the corporate debt market, um, that remains quite small um, in terms of uh, increasing in flows. So th I think that's an important point to make as well. So the, the you know, in terms of total debt being raised by companies, there is, there is a portion that is listed, which is covered in, in our analysis, but yep. there's, a there's, much, there's a much <laughs> wider portion that's being uh, funded through bank debt, through uh, traditional bilateral arrangements. And I think that it will be interesting to see what happens in the coming year in terms of where those, where those sources of funds come from. Right. Uh, USD funding has been very popular on foreign exchanges over the past few years. Right. Um, given the situation that we're in uh, with depreciating currencies, that may not be the case in the coming year, or, or at least until there's maybe greater certainty around what will happen with those currency markets. Uh, would it be a fair inference to say that as, as um, African markets become increasingly sophisticated and maybe investors become <coughs> sophisticated, um, that we should see a, an increase in, in corporate listed debt? The, I think that in terms of the ease of listing, yeah. the JSE has already been rated this year as the number one in terms right. of ease of, of accessing both equity and debt capital. Um, as we look to other markets becoming uh, more open and, uh, and more liquid, I think that you, you will see developments in that area. But obviously, the, you know, the, the, as, as you mentioned, debt is a concern both <laughs> yeah. for countries and for companies. So we, you know, it's, if, it's difficult to know how funding will be, uh, will be sourced. And a lot of this, of course, is dependent on where you are in the economic cycle. Absolutely right. And as, as you know, Africa has way more than just one story. And right. the economic cycle will be different from country to country, and that might look different in, in each of those countries and markets. Right. And if we look at the split of, of where the capital has been raised in, in, in the last four years, um, or the last five years, uh, where are the, the big pockets? Um, so Africa, I would assume, is a big chunk of that? Yeah, so if we talk about the equity capital that's been raised, the JSE is, is obviously um, leading the pack in terms of the, uh, the, the capital raised, the volume mm -hmm. uh, and and the value it's it it is um it, it it's the kind of the anchor of of an african capital market and has you know the largest by far market capitalization right and um, when we look to other markets um we see significant activity in in north africa mm -hmm. so um egypt tunisia morocco uh, and then we've also seen some dual listings driving activity in nigeria not this year but last year mm -hmm. uh, fairly large uh, dual uh, listing between um, the Nigerian exchange and the the London Stock Exchange. Right. So um, th there is there is capital being raised abroad. We also have kind of called out inbound and outbound activity as well because those tend to be very significant right. for companies. And and on the debt side of things, the debt uh, in terms of debt activity, it, it has changed kind of year to year. Um, debt actually being raised on exchanges in Africa is not as common as debt being raised overseas. So right. Luxembourg, uh, London, Ireland, uh, New York, places like that. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna ask the very easy question, of course, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, we, we know what the picture looks like um, to date. I, mm. I know uh, it's particularly a difficult question given the current economic environment, but uh, what does the trend suggest um, going forward in terms of uh, companies coming to the market, both to raise debt um, and also IPOs? So I think, if you were to ask me that question last year, um, in terms of the pipeline for companies coming to market, mm. it, it would have been a different story than it is right now. There were, y there were quite a few more transactions that were in progress or announced or, uh, or what. So it, it, is, it is a different story right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I think given the amount of volatility that's been introduced in the market, um, there is some trepidation potentially um, or, or more this year than last year. Uh, it, it is difficult to say what will happen this year. I think that there are some significant challenges um, to companies looking to, to actually access the market. Right, but 
the longer term trend should continue being, uh, again, assuming economic growth has been what it, uh, what it has been over the last couple of years, it should continue being quite positive. So if you look, if you look at the sectors, as I mentioned, as it breaks down financial services, um, consumer goods, healthcare, technology, these are all sectors that will you know, continue to, to need investment as the population uh, and the population increases and, and uh, the quality of life increases across the continent. Mm. So these are all, these are all um, sectors that, that will continue to grow. Other sectors, you know, like renewable energy may become more popular as well. We've seen a lot of activity, uh, not necessarily on the capital markets, but activity and interest in general and investment in renewable energy. Mm. Um, and this is particularly pertinent given the, the infrastructure requirements for the continent. Absolutely. Um, the infrastructure is, is absolutely key to, to these investments um, kind of being realized. Mm. And so investment is, investment is required, <laughs> right? So yeah. the challenge, I suppose, is where, where to find that funding. Okay. Um, now, <coughs> we spoke specifically about um, financial services. Um, the split within, within that, are, are we seeing a lot of insurance base or, or is it primarily banking? So actually this year we saw a lot of real estate companies, property companies coming right. to the market. Um, we saw that a, a bit in 2014 and in 2015 it was, it was more pronounced. Right. Uh, and when you actually, when you look at the, the performance of those uh, particular companies since their listing, they've been, um, you know, there have been companies that listed this year that didn't perform so well. Yeah. Uh, the property companies are, are less likely to be in that bucket. Okay. Um, so again, opportunity, even though the broad themes are financial services, uh, the mix uh, could be changing uh, over time. Yeah, that, that's correct. I mean, financial services this year were, uh, I think, 50% in terms of the number of, of IPOs. Uh, that, I, I don't know how, how that may shake out as, as we look towards the future. Yep. Um, but the, I think the important part there is that it, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's not resource dominated. Sure. Uh, it, it is, it, it's dominated by, by other, other drivers as well. Perfect, let's leave it there. Thanks to my guest, Andrew Dobaccio, PwC Director of Capital Markets for Southern Africa. That's all from Buy Africa this week. Remember to follow me on Twitter, that's at Mudiba underscore Tepo, and send us your thoughts about the show using the hashtag Buy Africa. From myself and the team, goodbye.